Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So now I want to continue our topics of statistics. So in this videos, I want to talk about the frequency distribution and the histogram uh, in, our probi in our probability and statistic. So first, uh, what is uh, uh, why we talk about the histograms? In last video, we already talked about how to use stem and uh, live a diagram to uh, visualize our numerical data. But for that one, we said if the data size is uh, really large, for example, 100, 1000, then the stem and the leaf diagram is not a good choice. So that's why here for the histogram, we can have the uh, to solve this problem. So first of all, for this uh, histogram graph, we also group our data into some bins or class uh, intervals, or we call it cells. So for the stem and leaf uh, graph, it means we will change it to our stems. However, here, this one, we can decide what the bins or how many bins or, or cells we want to draw the uh, graph. And the second is, it will also help us to count the frequency in each band. So in the stem and leaf graph, it means the length of our leaf is the frequency of each, uh, the data in each stem. So here, the first thing is we decided beans. And the second thing is then by drawing this uh, histogram, we can get the frequency in each beans. So then this is, how many beans should we choose? This is an important question. If we have too many beans, then this will make the shape of the graph is not looks very clear. For example, if we have 10 numbers, and then we, uh, we choose we have 10 beans, then for each of the beans, there is only one number here. So of course, they won't give us any information of the shape of the frequency. And if we choose the uh, beans is uh, too small or the number of beans is uh, too few, then this will lose so many details because we will group all the data in, into each beans, right? So if we have so few beans, for example, just one or just two, then that won't give us any information of the details. It yes, will only have two frequency for two beans. And then, however, if the the data in the our data size is have like one thousand. You can see like from the information of one thousand number to information of only two frequency in two bins. That means we lose too much details. So then the question is uh, which is a proper numbers of our bins. So there is a one a simple method is it depends on our data size. If our data size is uh, like n observations, then a proper or simple method is we just use the square root of n. So this is we choose this number as our numbers of bins. Okay, so then for this one, uh, to draw a histogram, there are several uh, terminology we can uh, we need to use. So there are frequency, relative frequency, and uh, cumulative frequency. So for so for frequency, this means it's like how many numbers or we say times of the one outcomes will uh, have in one data set. And also if we say we already decide the bins and the range of bins, then this uh, frequency of the data in one bin is the number of the data is of inside or in this uh, bin, in this range. And then the relative frequency is a number, it's the percentage of uh, the outcomes or a group of outcomes in our data set. So you can think of this actually is uh, use the frequency divided by the total numbers of data in our data set. Okay, and the last one is a cumulative frequency. Then you can think about the cumulative CDF density function. So this is just the sum up of the uh, frequency to the number of our like current 
uh, beans. So I will explain this by one example. So let's look at this example. So here we have a data set. The data set contains the number 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 21, 22, 24, 31, and 35. So if we count how many data we have in this data set, so in total we have 10 numbers in here. So that means if we look at the rule, how we decided the number of bin, because n is equal to 10, right? So the number of bins is equal to the square root of our uh, uh, number of the data here. So that means it's square root of n equals square root of 10. So here, of course, the number is uh, something not an uh, integer, right? But the number of bins, of course, should be an integer. So we just approximate this by 3. So that means here, in this example, we prefer to have a 3 different uh, range of our uh, 3 different uh, bins of our data. So then now we know we want to have three bins, and then it's a need to decide what's the range in each of the bins. So here there are actually different ways, but in general the wide of our range in the bins uh, generally is uh, equal. So that means here what we will choose is the number is between 11 to the minimum 11 and the maximum is uh, 35. So the total range of our data size is uh, 24. So then the rights of each of the bins should equal the 24 divided by 3. So the answer of this is 8. So here, that means for the first range, it will from the 11 until our value about the y's is 8. So it's until the 19. So here, about this range, in general, we, we use a similar way with our cumulative distribution function. So here, that means the left one is a uh, smaller or equal to, and the right one is about... Uh, smaller. So this is from first is uh, 11 smaller equal to x smaller than 19 and the second is 19 smaller equal to x smaller than this plus 8 so it's 27 and the last one is from 27 smaller equal to x and smaller than our last one so this is about our 35. Okay so this is uh, how to decide the uh, range of each uh, bins. And then the next thing is in this table, we want to compute all of the frequency in each of the bins and the relative frequency and the cumulative frequency. So here what this means, this means we will count the numbers inside each of the bins. So for the first one, let me underline the numbers of the under use the right color to underline the numbers in this first bin. So this is between 11 and 19. So of course 11 is inside it, 12, 13, 14. So these numbers are inside our first bin. So how many numbers will inside this uh, first bin? So if we count this, the number of this one should be 5. So that means the frequency in the first bin is 5. And uh, if I use the other color, like I use the um, color blue to underline the numbers in the second bin, so this is about num number 21, 22, and uh, 24. Okay, and the last one, I underline this number by the color orange. So this is a uh, number 31 and 35. So we count all of the numbers inside each of the uh, inside each of the bins, so we will have the frequency is 5, 3, and 2 for each of the bin. Okay, and then how to come to the cumulative uh, frequency? I said this idea is really similar with how we compute the cumulative density function for a discrete random variable. So here, that means the first one it just itself is a 5, and the second one is a number plus the first and the second. So this will become 5 plus 3 equal 8. 
and the last one is times from the first one, second one, and uh, until the third one. So this is 5 plus 3 plus 2, so the total is 10. Okay, and then the last uh, frequency, uh, last uh, terminology we want to decide it is the uh, relative frequency. So relative frequency is use the number of the data in each bin divided by the total number of data in the data set. So it's, you can think this kind of like the percentage, but this is actually a number. So for the first one, the number is, is use the frequency in 5 divided by the total numbers in this data set as 10. So the answer is 0.5. And the second one is, Use the number of frequency 3 divided by total number in this side, so it's a 0 0.3. And the last answer is 0 0.2. Okay, so this is how we can decide it, the frequency, cumulative frequency, and relative frequency to a data side. And now after we have this uh, table, the next thing is uh, this is used table to analyze this, or say to describe the data. And then we can also use graph to describe this. So the method is to draw the histogram, or in other words, the frequency distribution plot, or like the relative or cumulative uh, plot or relative frequency plot. So here I will give the example is how to draw the histogram plot of this. So here, if we have already got the table of this uh, frequency, then for to draw a histogram, the x-axis is our value of the data, and the y-axis is the frequency of our data. So then we will draw a bar plot about the frequency. So for the first uh, bin, the range is from 11 to 19, right? So then the frequency at this one is a 5. So that means here we will draw a bar of the 5 uh, with the 5. So that means here we will draw the bar looks like this. Okay, so then this is what we have for the first uh, bin. And for the second bin, the frequency is 3. So that means we will draw a bar of a 3 with the height as 3. So this is our second bar. And the last one is for our last bin with a uh, frequency as 2. So that means here we will draw our third bar looks like this. So this is our answer for how to draw the histogram for this to show the frequency of one data set. Okay, so of course uh, you can also use some software to help you do this. For example, the SPSS, the SAS, SAS, the R. So here uh, I want to give the details about how to, like for each of the software, how to draw the graph. I just, uh, just say for the R software, the function to draw the histogram is H-I-S-T. So this is just first for letter for our histogram um, histogram uh, word, and then we use the parentheses and put the data name uh, inside this uh, parentheses. So this is how to draw the graph of the histogram. And of course, you can look more uh, materials about this R, and if you're interested, you can leave the comments in this uh, under this videos, and maybe I, I will upload some uh, data about or uh, upload some like explain of how to use R to analyze this the data. Okay, so this is my explanation of histogram and how to compute uh, frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency of a data set. So thank you for watch this video. And in next video, I will continue my topics about how to visualize our data set. Uh, by some uh, classical pl or typical plots of statistics. Please subscribe my channel and see you in next video.